Hi, this is Mark Burgess from The Chameleons and you're watching Temple Vision, which just goes to show how cool you are.
Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you Mark Burgess of the Chameleons. Okay, how you doing, Mark? Yeah, I'm doing good, thanks. How are you? Great, great, great. Um, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty. It's I like I like this weather. It's like a like a Parisian weather or like London weather. You know? Oh, it's a lot warmer than London this yeah, time but, of year. Yeah, but but in the in, you know the <coughs> winter days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just nice. It's cool. Yeah, it's yeah. Nice. So, so uh, how do you like America now? Oh, I'm having a great time. Absolutely great. H how are the how are the um, the goth kids or anybody who's comes to the, comes to the show? Oh, we've had it? like lots of various people come to the gigs and we've had love coming at us from every angle and it's just been absolutely spectacular well that's great oh so um, how many is this like one of the last the last shows of the tour we're getting to the last few now yeah yeah I think we're about three left or something like that oh that's cool and uh, was it big news when uh, the, the chameleons formed reformed back in England um, well we, we we were as underground as we ever was what people find out about it and um, you know it was quite um, uh, it got, it got quite quite uh, enthusiastic by the end uh, by the end of it, but we uh, we didn't really publicise it that much. But people so it wasn't out on the it. enemy, huh? No, we don't bother with them. <laughs> uh, the melody maker, I saw something, you know. Yeah. That said that it was an article called uh, the beginning of Britpop. Oh, that was yeah. No, that was the Guardian. That the Guardian, the, yeah. Yeah, that was the Guardian newspaper. Oh, that's great, man. Where Britpop began. So uh, it's any a lot of rubbish because we had nothing to do with that whatsoever. Yeah. about this new material that you put out recently with the chameleons um, well it's the, like, the last studio album that we did it came together very quickly much more quickly than I thought it would um, it's got the inclusion of our 
one of our best friends and one of the coolest guys I've ever met, Kwasi Asante from Manchester, came in. He's uh, doing some African percussion and some backing vocals. And it's kind of a couple of things on there that are away from the norm for us. But um, it's fresh and it's new and it's still evolving and it was good fun. Wow, so uh, any uh, unreleased stuff that you're hiding from us? Any any unreleased weapons that you're... I don't think so. No, I think the vaults have been pretty much emptied, but not by us. It seems like uh, everything you know, everything we do, whether it's a demo or it's a writing session, always seems to end up on the CD somewhere. So uh, I think it's all pretty much out there, but we're hoping to do some new stuff next year. Great, great, great. Uh, was there, there's, a lot of talk, there's a lot of talk about the follow-up to Zima Junction. Can you um, tell us about that? Well, well I'm focusing on chameleons really, the, that's really where my head's at and it's the same for the others, I mean, uh, they had the rigs thing going on. The, the rigs, really, yeah. yeah. it was really great, but while we're, while we're working with chameleons, then chameleons continues to be our main focus really, so, um, I mean, I may play some shows, some acoustic shows next year uh, with some friends of mine, but apart from that, I mean, we're really trying to focus on the band. <laughs> for the movie 24 hour party people no not really because I mean I've been asked this a, a few times and I was like why won't we? because it wasn't really about us at all it was about Tony Wilson and what Tony Wilson did in Manchester and what he did for Manchester and what he and his involvement with some of the groups that came through factory and we were you guys good friends no well we've never we've never really had that much to do with them um, I mean I'm aware of Tony Wilson since I was you, 16 I mean, well you guys played at the Hacienda we played at the Hacienda so did a lot of other bands James and the Smiths and um, uh, you know, all played there and... Well, along with New Order and Joy Division and the Smiths, you guys and the Chameleons, you yeah. guys are considered one of, the main, one of the main influences of, of all that stuff Stone that was Roses. coming out from that area, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were we were very much part of that and they acknowledged that when they launched the film, they, would, they talked about us and they talked about Stone Roses and they talked about Smiths, but the film itself was about Tony Wilson. I mean, it should have been called Carry On Tony. I mean, right. it was a carry-on film in, 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 in more ways than one. But I mean, Tony's a great character and he's done a lot for Manchester and he's done a lot for the scene and um, I, we've always had the utmost respect for him. Um, but we didn't work with him. We had no, you know, we weren't part of that at all. We were very separate from that, you know. As, as If you read the New Order book, you know, it's, that's what it says. I mean, and it's true. Chameleons had its own audience. It, we were North Manchester and our...
it seems as as though Americans uh, American music keeps on getting worse and worse every year, you know, because of the radio monopolies here in the U.S. What what, what do you have to say to the youth that that are here in America um, about that? That you can you can do it, especially now with internet, you can get your stuff across without having to go crawling to uh, mediocre radio stations. You, you can get it across, it is possible to do it, and if you utilize the resources that you've got, especially as I say with internet, I mean it is difficult when you're trying to establish an audience, it's easy for me to sit here and say these things because we've got an audience, yeah? Um, and it has get progressively harder, it gets progressively harder to, do, uh, to establish yourself. But with internet, you can do it, it can be done especially. And there are ways, and if you, if you use your imagination, you can get to people. You don't need to go crawl into these mediocre radio stations. And I mean, let's face it, most of this stuff they play is dull as dishwater. And so, you know, you should be quite worried if they Dirty play- Dirty dishwater, yeah. Dull as fucking dishwater, excuse me. Um, and you should be quite worried if they play your stuff, because you're, you know, I mean, it's like the most interesting music is the stuff you don't hear on the radio, to be quite honest, a lot of the time, unless you're really lucky. There are some like good community radio going on, like in Hamburg where I live. I listen to community radio, which is basically airtime given over to uh, not to professionals, but to people who just love music, who get the airtime, and they like have some radical stuff going going on, and you never know what you're going to get. Um, so I mean, it is possible. Don't lose, don't you know? Don't you don't have to go and, and uh, you know suck these people's private parts just to get your stuff on the radio. Like fuck them if they don't want to play it. Don't let you know. Who, who cares? You can generate a lot of interest on your own.
do a lot of British bands use the same formula to make great music? I don't, like, what the f I don't think there is a formula. I don't think there really is a formula. Like I mean, there's some something people try. I mean, there's something right. in the water in Manchester. Not really. No, I think it's uh, it's always been the, cr the northwest of England, Liverpool, Manchester, have always been a very creative place. Always, um, you know, where you've got like a port with, especially with records. In the early 60s, coming in and out, huh? American records were coming in via the ports, really. All the sailors, all the merchant seamen were bringing records back from America with them, and it's always it, it's always been a very the northern soul, place. huh? Or the Motown stuff. Absolutely, yeah. And then and then and you know, going back the to like the late 50s to like Chuck Berry and um, Duke Ellington and people like that, you know, it's always been a tradition for that, and it's always been a very creative place, you know. Um, it's just naturally uh, gone that way. What what blows you away? What do you buy? You know, doves I like very much. Sigo Ross from uh, Iceland I like yeah, very right. much. I heard the Interpol record just before I left to come here. I only got a, a one listen of it. Mugwai I loved very much. Um, I love Coldplay, actually. I know they're like very kind of more mainstream area of things, but I really do like Coldplay. Radiohead to me are the kings. Uh, of, uh, uh, they, they epitomise like the perfect artistic guitar group of the 21st century. I love Radiohead very much. Sorry. I'm calling. 